Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 8 of my BB-8 version 2 build. Check back on the previous parts to see the complete build, the code, electronics, and I am going to be releasing all the CAD and code once this is finished. So, inside here we've basically got a hubless wheel which goes in one direction and a big flywheel that spins to turn the robot in the opposite direction to the travel of the flywheel. The head is independently movable in all axis and everything is controlled by PID loops and inertial measurement units that measure the angle. There's one of those on the head stick, or the head control arm, and one in the hub of the actual droid. Last time I got the head cosmetics mostly sorted. There were some more things to come back and do, like the aerials and the eye lens, and of course weathering, which I'll do once I've done all of it. And that seems to work pretty well. It still drives around. I had to um, make the head about 20 mil higher, but it does drive okay, and the lights are activated by a tilt switch, so when it's sat still, I've just got one red LED in the eye, and when I move it around and start driving, the other lights come on in a fairly random order. This time, we're going to have a look at the body panels and try and at least get those LEDs in, and also look at potentially putting animatronics in the removable panels on the side so we can make the utility arms open. I just wanted to talk a little bit about motor drivers before I continue. So I was using these L298 motor drivers and you can see there's a couple of them in here. This one is a head spinning one and this one um, controls the motors that turn the flywheel and there's one of those on each side. Now these are okay, they're two amps per channel dual H bridge and you can parallel them up to get four amps per channel. But what I found was that with the head pivot going backwards and forwards, sometimes it was going into overcurrent lockdown mode. So what I've done in fact is put this motor driver in, I need to tidy up the wires still and make a proper mounting. And this is a BTS 7960 motor driver. Um, it claims to do 43 amps at 27 volts, so pretty high powered. And these are about £15 in money each, which is exceptionally good value. So I've got one of those now controlling the head pivoting backwards and forwards, which seems to work much better. It used to get stuck sometimes before when it pulled too much current and the motor controller shut down, um, and that works reliably. I've also currently got one of these driving the main drive wheel, which is actually on 24 volts. It's a windscreen wiper motor. So I was previously using the MD03, which is actually quite a nice motor driver. These are about 60 pounds though. Um, it does its own PWM generation, so you can drive it as if it's um, a radio control speed controller. It's also got I squared C, some acceleration and deceleration settings and various other things. However, the BTS 7960 is probably a better value option if you want to build something like this and you need a high power motor driver. Now, because this really runs in a single axis and turns to steer, um, I've always got in a situation where my panels um, always overlap the outside somewhere, so the, the droid never drives sideways, and that means I can always get to the inside of all of the panels at all times. So the plan is to um, put LEDs in there, and the big panel that removes from here will have opening arms. So I need to get some power to that and some data for servos and the LEDs, and I'm going to do that with slip rings because obviously the outside always turns against the inner hub that goes along, that goes round as it goes along. So um, in order for that to work, I need to mount a slip ring about the pivot point, which is about there, and then take these wires to the outside for the LEDs in these panels. And then I need to have some way of unplugging this panel for LEDs and for servos. So I need a six wire connector and we've got enough there for power. Um, data for say NeoPixels, RGB LEDs and also for servos and I think one left over. Right, I've got my two panels that remove which are going to have doors in the open and I want those to be the most suitable panels. So I might cheat slightly on movie accuracy and move the panels round so I've got the uh, favourable ones which have to be on the side. So I've got two of the BB-8 toys here, the Blades Toys Inflatable RC. Have a look at my um, big toy unboxing I did a couple of weeks ago. And I've also got the Hasbro here. So these are the most accurate and they also match. So if we take the Hasbro's head off, um, we can tell we've got this pattern here, the same on the side. Yeah, that side is the same and the same on there and all of them match up. So I think what I want, in fact, to have the opening panels will be this one, because it looks like utility arms on R2-D2, so there's five panels that can open there. And probably one of the other more interesting looking ones that's got uh, big sections that open, maybe that. Um, maybe this one looks like it's got two panels that open or one that opens for the other side, which might make it a bit easier. So obviously each one of those needs a servo that needs to be controlled. So I'm gonna decide which one's gone, these two, 
and then I'll position the others on the panels that are fixed on the droid. I decided to immediately change my mind as soon as I started to uh, think about marking this out because actually this space isn't very big and to get all of these to open is going to be quite tricky. So uh, what I decided to do in the end was put one utility arm that opens on each panel. So I've decided to start marking something similar to this out. Uh, this panel will be fixed. This will be the one opening panel that hinges along this side, which it looks like it does. So that'll be much easier to get the servos in. Um, there looks like looks like there's a hole. I'm not sure if that's part of the Hasbro design. Um, I think there might be LEDs here somewhere, uh, which will be easy to put on somewhere. Somewhere I'll make up where the LED goes and there'll be a couple of LEDs on each panel, or possibly one. Just scoring the lines into this panel with this thing again, like I did on the first ones. So just doing that by hand and being quite careful to keep a straight line. So I may well hand paint these sections. Of course I need to cut out. I've decided two LEDs go in there. So I need to cut those out to fit a NeoPixel, which is this size. Hopefully that should be um, more than enough space to fit them. And I've been careful to make sure that that isn't where the hook is, so I don't have any problems. Scored all of these in, and now it's time to attempt to cut these out, which I'm going to do very carefully with a very sharp knife. Tidy those edges up with a little file, and then we should find the Neo Pixel should fit straight in there. I might put a 3D printed diffuser in, but as it is, if you can imagine that lit up red and blue, that should look okay. And it's slightly recessed, so that hopefully nothing will push it inwards. We'll put lots of hot glue behind it. I've also cut this panel out, which is going to be the opening panel, which will open like so. So that's going to need to be painted separately and it's also going to need to be refitted because obviously it's a really tight fit in there and it needs to go flush. Obviously it never touches the ground so it's okay if it's a bit lumpy and obviously that's why these panels are opening and the rest are not. And I need to fit a servo in there which should be fairly easy with a little bit of 3D printed hinge. Um, so I'm going to need to trim the sides down. But the first thing to do is to mask off this area and paint it silver then we can get the LEDs fitted and get that working. Here it is refitted to the droid, so obviously the LEDs will go in there, and then this will hinge open like so, which should be pretty good. In fact, there's probably space here to have an arm or something that pops out. We'll have to see if that works mechanically um, and exactly what that is, but for now it will just be an opening panel. Here's the other panel which I've done, and that's again is the removable door, which I think is going to hinge from the inside. And again, that'll be painted once I've fitted it, and I've got two holes for LEDs. So I'm just working on drawing out the other panels on the ball which don't open. Um, the silver sections on these panels I've actually masked and sprayed, so I think I'll probably just do the same on this, but obviously it involves masking the whole ball off. Uh, but there we go, might as well get a good finish on there. And I need to make sure the LEDs are where they can be reached from the hollow parts inside. Obviously I've masked off most of the ball and just painting those panels in. I have all of the panels now painted, so they've all been scored, they've all been outlined and they've all been masked off and painted in metallic silver paint. So we've got that one, we've got this, and we've also got of course the other two that I did first. One is there. And one is there, which is the least accurate one, because I made a bit of a mistake when I was marking and scoring it. But I'm pretty happy with those, and of course we've got the two removable ones, which fit on each side, so we now need to think about how those panels are going to open. I've designed this hinge here, which will hopefully hinge those panels out properly, and it's curved so it can reach around the edge. Um, I've made the contour on the bottom here, those are rounds just at the right radius in all directions to fit inside the ball. So they'll obviously fit inside the panel and the uh, sort of frame of the panel. So those are slightly rounded on the bottom. Um, the idea is that the servo pushes the top red hole and uh, that causes the thing to pivot round. So um, this is something commonly used on R2-D2 dome panels, a similar design to this. So let's get this printed and we'll stick it on and hopefully it'll work.
Here's the arm fitted to the side of this. So obviously this will uh, push outwards like this and on the outside it looks like this which lifts that panel well clear of the frame and all the way around so it can open right out. Um, I'm just painting the panel on the inside at the moment so it's not white when it opens. So it's silver all over. So that just needs to be relocated in the hole and this piece stuck onto it. Um, then I just need to make a servo mounting to sit behind it with a rod that pushes on that top pivot point to push it out. So that's a normal position and the servo just travels a little bit and pushes it open. Here's one, I haven't fitted the servo yet but the hinge works so if I put my hand behind I can push that open and it works pretty well. I had to cut a bit of extra clearance on this edge just so there's enough for it to skim past the frame. That seems to work pretty well so I'll get the other one sorted and we'll put the servos in. I've fitted my servo now which is just in another block with a lever so when the servo turns it opens the panel which seems to work quite well. Just getting some NeoPixels fitted in here, so I've got my uh, NeoPixels two on a wire, so they're daisy chained, and that, I've got a pair of them just in there that you can just see, which are mounted through the hole here, so they just shine through and those seem to have mounted up okay. They're super glued in and also the wire is hot glued. Now the wire comes along the frame here, and this is where the slip ring is going to be mounted, so I've printed this case for it so it can be solvent welded to the back of this frame, roughly in the middle. And then I'll need a connector so that I can unplug the panels, which are going to be these, so the big removable panel will be able to unplug. I now have the LEDs powered up in the ball, so we've got those there, another pair there, and of course the others right at the bottom on those two rings as well. So those are not particularly bright, they're set to 85 out of 255, those are NeoPixels and you can set the RGB, so I've just set the uh, blue and the red there on each one. Um, I can make them brighter, but that looks pretty good under normal lighting conditions. So what I've got is a little breakout board in here, and that um, allows me to put that panel on and it's got the connector on and all the wires come out, and of course that's attached to the slip ring. My wire to the slip ring is just basically tacked across the middle here, um, offset, and it um, is cable tied on for some strain relief. Apart from that, it's fine. It's fairly free rotating. That seems to be okay as the internal hub rotates. Uh, this wire stays here, and of course, it always stays basically this way up, looking at this piece of electronics, so it doesn't actually go around against this, so there's no danger of it getting caught on anything. Here's the inside of one of my panels wired up, so I've got the connector there to connect to the breakout board in the droid. And I've got various things, so we've got the servo obviously wired in, we've got the two NeoPixels which are just there, and we've also got a tilt switch. Um, and that will tell me which way up the panel is, so I don't open the door uh, when it's facing the ground basically. So that's there just so we can put some logic in that only the panel that's the right way up will open. So the panels and lights are in, so uh, what I've done now is wired that to the switch that activates the sounds, so the panels open, and only the one that's upright opens, so the other one remains closed, and that's using the tilt switch to define the logic. So if we turn this round, the other opening panel is here, but nothing happens till I spin this round and it's upright, so let's move this back over here. Hard to say which way up we are, I think that's it. Yep, there we go, so that's wired with a half second debounce. So basically if I press the button and hold it for permanently, it opens and closes. And if I do it for less than half a second, it should open or close. There we go, and it plays the sound at the same time and that takes half a second to trigger. So if you're fast with your fingers, you can sometimes get panels and those sounds. Of course, I could implement more buttons on the controller so that I can control them independently or I can have a separate button for sounds and flaps, but I haven't. So at the moment, that's still attached onto that button. Driving is still as it was, so I can still off-center the head there and move it all around or um, drive backwards and forwards. There's probably still a little bit of tuning to do, but uh, on the whole, not too unhappy with that. Several improvements from doing this version, which I'll put into the next version. But on the whole, uh, not too unhappy. 
All right, so let's just give it a driving test. I found um, a couple of issues in the code and now it's substantially quicker than it was. Uh, basically, I'd made a bit of an error and crippled the actual maximum output of the PID controller. So now it's uh, quite a lot quicker than it was. And pretty stable if I don't crash. Whoops. Hit the armchair there. Let's try and level it up before... Um, So yeah, getting there, probably some retuning to do. I've just opened up a whole lot of uh, possibilities. So, uh, Pretty happy with the droid's newfound speed. It's quite hard to actually get up to speed and watch it being stable in that room because it keeps crashing into things. So I keep having to pull back on both sticks to stop it. Uh, my head is a bit lurchy and that's the mechanics inside, but it would drive a lot smoother if I could go in a straight line for a long time. So I'll try and find a place to test it and see if I can squeeze that into next episode. But next time we're gonna be going back basically putting the details on so there's an eye lens missing the aerials and some more painting, hopefully, to make it nice and dirty, just like BB-8 in the movie. But that's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more updates on this project and other projects. And also check out the social media links in the descriptions of this video.